Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. So for today's session, I'll be showing you how to create flowchart using an application called Flowgorithm. So we have Flowgorithm. So given the definition, so Flowgorithm is a free beginner's programming language that is based on simple graphical flowchart. So what is a flowchart? Flowchart is a diagram that describes the computer process or operation and typically using standard symbols to represent different stages or actions within a chart. So for a student to learn how to program, the student must rely on flowcharts for the student to develop his or her programming logic. So once the student understands programming logic, then it is easy for the student to learn several major programming languages. So here are the symbols used in flowgorithm representing different stages or actions within the chart. So we have the input and the output symbols. Where in the input symbol reads a value from the keyboard and stores the result in a variable. So we have the output, the output symbol, as you can see, Input and output have the same symbol wherein they have a different function. So output evaluates an expression and then displays the result on the screen. Then we have another symbol called the declare. So declare is used to create variables and arrays. So these are used to store data while the program is running. So you can declare multiple variables by separating the variable names with commas. Then the other one is the assign button or the assign statement or the, rather the assign symbol. So what it does is it is used to store the result of a calculation into a variable. So this is one of the most common tasks found in programs. So and the rest of the symbols will be discussed on the next session. Okay, so... To understand more, oh, sorry. So to understand more on uh, how to create flowchart using the the tool, of course, of logarithm, I'll be showing you how. So we have this simple problem, or rather a sample problem. So we will be creating a flowchart that will input two integer values, then compute and display their sum. So to create a full chart given the problem, so we will be, we will be showing or we will be using the tool uh, of logarithm. Okay, so I'll be showing you how to open the, the logarithm. Okay, so when you start the flow chart using the logarithm, you will see these two rounded uh, uh, rounded rather rounded rectangles called the terminal so these symbols represent the beginning and end of your program so normally in flogarithm the domain is representing the beginning of the program so everything in a flowchart is represented by a shape so you will add your own shapes between the main and the end button, or the, rather the main and the end terminal. So to add the shape, all, all you have to do is move your mouse pointer over this line. Then if we're going to look at the screen, it turned orange. So it means that it is ready for you to add a shape. So if you can add the shape, the line will turn orange now. So what you will do is either double click on that line or click the mouse button then what's next is every time you click the uh, the, the line uh, a pop-up menu will appear that shows all the shapes or the symbols that you can add so if we're going to analyze the problem 
given the problem, creating a flowchart that will input to integer values and compute and display their sum. You can already identify how many inputs and what is the desired output. So the inputs are the two integer values and the output desired is the sum. So it means that we will be using to re uh, this input symbol to represent reading a value from the keyboard, which is the two integer values. So click the input. As you can see, it is inserted between the main and the end. But as we all know, that the computer process starts with input, process, output. But normally, when you create a program using different languages, you have to declare or you have to define or rather identify all the data needed for you to uh, display or achieve the desired output. So it means that before you assign or you use the insert symbol, you have to declare all the data needed for you to have a, uh, to achieve rather the desired output, which is the sum. So it means that all the data needed should be stored on a variable. Now, to uh, store all those uh, data needed in a variable, we will be needing a symbol for storing a variable, and that is the declare button or the declare symbol. So we have this declare symbol. Then it means that if you are going to use the flow algorithm to create a, to create a flow chart, so we have the main. Then after the main uh, terminal, it means that the next symbol will be the declare button. So it means that, the, again, the function of the declare button is to store all the variables needed to achieve the desired result. So when you click the declare, it means that you have to assign a unique name for all the data needed to achieve the desired result. And what are those data? Of course, our, uh, the, our inputs. So given the problem, as you can see, there are two inputs, which is, of course, so each input should be represented by means of a unique variable. So normally, a variable name starts with a character. Okay. So it is said in the problem, input to integer value. So it means that we have, uh, to uh, you have to declare two variables for those two inputs. And those two inputs are integer values. So let us say A for the first integer value. Then, as I've said a while ago, that in the declare symbol, you can declare, uh, in the declare symbol, you can have multiple variables in a single, sim, uh, in a single declare box. All you have to do, you just separate them by means of comma. So comma to separate the first from the second value. Then the second integer value is represented by a unique name, which is B. And as we all know, given the problem that the data type of those values are, is rather integer type. So since we have here the integer type already, so click the OK button. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Then what's next? Is there a variable needed for the output? Yes. What is the, our output? The sum. So for the flow algorithm to display the output, which is the sum, you have to store the result again in a variable. So again, before the input symbol, click again. Then you have the, okay. So you have to click the declare button, or if you want, you can insert here the other variable for the sum. So 
by separating them or by adding a comma after the second variable. Then, define a unique variable for the output, which is the sum. So let us say sum. Then click the okay button. That's it. Then the next is what? Okay, so next step is input already. So you have already declared all the data needed in a variable. So it means that you are ready for you are you are ready to input all those data by using their unique variable name. So input. So what is the first input? Of course, as we all know that we have declared the first integer value in a variable A. So double click the input symbol, then what is the first integer value? It is stored in a variable A. Then click the OK. What's next? So after inputting the first value, so we still have to input the second value. So by using again the input symbol, then we have to click the input symbol. And the second integer value is represented by variable B. Then click the OK. What's next? Analyzing the problem. So input two integer values and compute and display the sum. So it means that we already have declared those two integer values. Then the next step is you will be computing the sum of those two inputted values. It means that after the, this symbol, what's next is you will be creating a formula to compute for the sum. And we will be using this symbol, the assigned symbol. And of course, to create a formula for the sum of those two inputted values, then double click in the assign button. Then, of course, you have to identify what is the variable that you have used for the output, which is the sum. Also, we have declared sum as the variable for the sum or for the total. And what is the formula for computing the sum of those, in, those two inputted values? So we have the A representing the first value. Then, of course, addition is represented by a plus sign. Then the second inputted value is represented by variable B. So that's it. Then click the OK button. What's next is after uh, assigning the formula to actually the desired uh, result, then the next step is displaying the output, which is the sum. So what will be the symbol used to display the result? And that is click on the line, and that is the output symbol. So double-click the output symbol, then what is the desired result? The sum. Then click the OK button. So if you're done working with your flowchart, and it is and you are ready to run your program, then just click this button representing run. Okay. To be able to see the output. Click the run button, then it is said another pop-up menu appears in your screen. Then it is said, please enter a value of the type integer for A. Let us say 12. Then click the enter button. So after clicking the enter button, we have this again another instruction. Please enter a value of type integer for B. Let us say 10. Then click the enter button. And as you can see in your screen, the you can see the output. As we all know, 12 plus 10 is 22. So that's it. It's very easy to use the logarithm to create a flowchart. So that's it for today's session. See you next time. Have a pleasant day. Have a, have a blessed day, everyone.